Um, the question is struggling with PCS for post-concussion syndromes for six months. Uh, what can I do? First, I want I want I feel like if you can explain why someone may have symptoms six months post-concussion, I think you kind of talked about the whole metabolic process, but why would someone even feel symptoms that much afterwards? Shouldn't they feel better at that point? And then the second question is kind of what, what they can do potentially mm -hmm. to, to, and we kind of talked about what you can do with graded exposure, but I think the real cool answer would be why someone feels any type of symptoms six months post-concussion. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, with, with acute concussion, we know about the metabolic process that happens, that energy drop. Uh, there's also other things that happen uh, from a pathophysiological standpoint, like blood flow impairments. Um, and when you get beyond kind of that three to four week period, which is, is the acute concussion, that's about the length of time it takes for that energy level to come back up is that anywhere between two to, you know, kind of four to six weeks area in there and everyone's different. And that's what makes it a little bit more challenging. But um, when you get beyond that, and, and, and technically, when you get beyond kind of that four week period is when you're into PCS or post concussion syndrome, well, there's a couple definitions of it. But the one we like to use is about is about four weeks, if you're still symptomatic, you're, you're now considered PCS or post concussion syndrome. Um, and there's, there's a variety of theories behind why this occurs, but we don't actually know for certain why it does occur. But the five kind of main theories are number one, blood flow. Um, so, and that, that has to do with a few different mechanisms. There's four different mechanisms that can control cerebral blood flow. And really what your body and brain want to do is you, your brain wants to keep the blood flow consistent throughout it, throughout itself. So, uh, in, in the event your blood pressure goes up within your body, well, your brain wants to make sure that it doesn't change within the brain, right? It wants to keep things consistent. Um, and so it reacts to things like changes in the partial pressures of CO2 and your breathing rates and all these things. Those mechanisms are known to be impaired following concussion. And so it changes the amount of blood flow you're getting to your brain. And so one of those things that could be causing persistent symptoms is a, is a blood flow issue and where, you know, you feel kind of fine at rest, but as soon as you get your heart rate up, you start to become symptomatic. Or as soon as you start doing cognitive activity, you, st you start to become symptomatic. So that one there it is something that we would test for through, through a treadmill test. And then the treatment for it is actually exercise. So this, that's treatable, but you have to do it in a sub-symptom threshold way. And the first thing you have to do is find out what what your symptom threshold is mm -hmm. and that's where a clinician will come in and actually run you on the treadmill to try and see what your threshold target is the next on the list of potential um, post-concussion syndrome creators or, or causes is inflammation so neuroinflammation after having an injury you're going to get inflammation um, within the brain and this inflammation can kind of linger and stick around a lot of the interventions for this would either be like medication based or also dietary interventions so eating a low inflammatory diet, avoiding foods that are, that are high kind of pro-inflammatory foods. Um, you know, your typical gluten, dairy, uh, sugar, refined sugar is, is awful. Alcohol is, is very pro-inflammatory. Um, and these foods are known to actually increase gut permeability, which then can increase inflammation, which then goes to your brain. And um, they found cognitive deficits following, you know, all sorts of different surgical procedures just because there's systemic inflammation. Systemic inflammation can make you feel foggy, confused, constantly concentration difficulties, give you headaches and all that stuff. So a lot of this can be squashed by eating a really, really healthy, clean, clean, clean diet. And we put everybody on a, on a low inflammatory diet uh, following their injury. Uh, the third thing could be your visual system. Real quick with, with that, yeah, what, yeah. what, uh, what anti-inflammatory foods do you typically recommend? We just, it's not necessarily, we recommend anti-inflammatory foods. We just avoid mm -hmm. the inflammatory foods. Pro -inflammatory. So, okay. So, Yes. Yeah, so typically the way that we go, and there's some supplements and stuff that can, that can help out um, that, that have uh, anti-inflammatory properties, things like fish oils, uh, curcumin is, is, is a new big one. Um, uh, magnesium can help with kind of that pathophysiological process in the excitatory phase. So that one has to be like a quick early one. Um, you know, there's, there's all sorts of these things. Probiotics can help with gut healing and um, you know, that type of stuff. And so most of it's just avoiding the pro-inflammatory foods and just trying gotcha. to, to eat, you know, the, the clean kind of basically fruits and vegetables and, and high quality, you know, meats, fish, uh, is, is the way to go. Um, mm -hmm. no, I, I, I don't want to say keto, but like, you know, more high quality fats in your diet than, you know, 
crappy carbs, but uh, not straight keto. I wouldn't go that far. Uh, okay, next on the list is uh, your visual system and your vestibular system. And I put these two together because you can't really tell the difference a lot of times between them. What seems like a balance issue might be a vision issue and what seems like a vision issue might be a balance or vestibular issue. The next one on the list, I kind of lump in with those ones as well, is the neck. So with a concussion, there's always going to be a whiplash attached to it, right? Your head and neck are connected. So any type of whipping motion of your head back and forth when you get hit is going to also create some, some muscular or joint damage in the neck. Um, you may not even have neck pain. I get a lot of patients coming in. They don't have any neck pain whatsoever, yet I can reproduce their headaches just by you know, sticking my finger in their suboccipital muscles. And it'll just be like, oh my God, right here. So anyone who's interested in this, just look at the referral patterns um, from neck muscles into the head. And you'll start to realize that if your headache is always, you know, front right side, I'm going SCM and I'm going going some of the joints like and I where to look now and I just push in there and all of a sudden if I can recreate that headache I've nailed it I know that that's where it's coming from and now if I can I, if, if I can loosen that off and give them some rehab exercises I'm going to be able to get rid of that headache completely and a lot of times once you get rid of the headache you get rid of the concentration problems because it's really hard to focus when you have a headache uh, you know like all these things start to go away my sleep gets better and you know yada 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 but also the neck can make you feel dizzy and it can also affect your eyes. So even as your eyes move, people will have this skipping motion, this saccadic motion of their eyes during smooth pursuits. And that could be a vision issue, that could be a vestibular issue, but that can also be a neck issue. Uh, and you'll find that if, you, if you're able to really you know, get in there and work this stuff out, you'll, you can get rid of all of those visual problems. And that's just a, just a feedback mechanism through the cerebellum that you're able to actually affect change, which is crazy because you can actually affect you know, visual reflexes just by treating the neck, which is, which is crazy. Number five on that list is, is the psychological end of things. And so this is the one that everyone, you know, everyone likes to hate on because, you know, especially if you're going through it, you're like, no, 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 it's not that it's not that. But Pre-existing anxiety and depression are one of the leading causes of persistent concussion symptoms. So anyone that's, that's, a, that's an anxious person that's had anxiety in the past and they get a concussion injury, particularly with all the media coverage and hype on it, we know that that is likely to lead them to having more persistent symptoms. So it's... Um, like being able to educate the patient, uh, you know, more thoroughly, being able to draw that picture and explain to them that, you know, concussion is not necessarily brain damage. Concussion is a functional injury, but that's gone now. Right now we're looking at kind of some of the other stuff that could be going on. And all we have to do is run you through this stuff and figure out what it is. And once we find out what it is, it's, it's, it's 100% treatable, right? Mm -hmm. Concussion is a treatable thing. You just need somebody who has the knowledge to put it all together to explain to you how we're going to do it and use a systematic approach to go, okay, treadmill test, they passed. Okay, it's not blood flow, moving on. Okay, mm -hmm. put them on this diet. How do you feel on that? Okay, great. Are you following it 100%? You have to be 100% on this diet. If you're going to cheat and say, well, I did a little bit of it, you're not going to get the benefit. You have to be 100% committed to your recovery. Um, Number three, visual vestibular, you start getting, okay, let's give you some of this. Okay, we noticed a couple issues here. Here's some rehab. Start working on that. And you're just peeling back the layers. And, you know, eventually you're, you're now, okay, now the symptoms are all gone, right? You've, you've kind of pinpointed. But um, just getting back into that, that psych piece is it's such a huge component of concussion recovery and no one wants to admit it. So I'm constantly referring people to therapy, talk mm -hmm. therapy, um, you know, having people go see psychiatry or, or even their family doctor just to, to look at um, different options for meds, um, you know, anti-anxiety medication, antidepressant medication, that type of stuff. And that's often the, the trigger that, that gets people better, right? But nobody wants to go down that road, um, you know, based on the stigma surrounding mental health, which is, which is crazy. It's just, let's just get better. Um, and that's really my whole focus. And so that's, that's a big one. Um, and I think that enough people aren't, you know, too many people aren't giving that one enough credit. Um, right. So.